For Ivankiv, finally this was a day of salvation. Ukrainian army engineers have built a pontoon bridge, reconnecting this small town with the outside world. The relief of those who'd endured 35 days of Russian occupation was obvious. But it's only when you hear what they've gone through that you can understand. Marina is the deputy mayor here and has heard grim accounts of how Russian soldiers treated women in the area. The town's physical damage is limited to a few streets, but it's what you can't see that's more devastating. Elena Skoropad is telling me about trying to save her son Artem. She scooped him into her arms after he was hit by shrapnel, describing the injuries in graphic detail. Artem was just 12 years old, a keen basketball player. His mother and stepfather Sasha had tried to flee, but they say a cluster munition exploded, peppering them with shrapnel. Когда мы приехали сюда, Артём всю дорогу по дороге в машине кричал: "Мамочка, Саша, я вас люблю". Это его слова. Потом, ну, кричал, что ножки болят, спина. Мы когда сюда приехали, он ещё живой был. Ну, потом там несовместимые были травмы. The hospital is full of those injured from the shooting, shelling and mines, but they're thankful there are now medical supplies. For more than a month, the doctors worked with almost nothing. We work it without any electricity, without water, without anything, without any medicine, medicaments, no connection with the outside, with the world. And a lot of victims here from, the, uh, from Russian attacks. Uh, Russians attacked civilians, they killed civilians. A lot of people with the gunshot wounds, it's only today that people have managed to connect their phones to a temporary hotspot here and suddenly they're able to talk to loved ones and find out who's still alive. Their faces tell a story of grief and shock at the scale of the war that until now has been hidden from them. There are many towns like Ivankiv which have been cut off from the outside world since the beginning of this war and occupied by the Russian army. Only now is the truth beginning to emerge about the horrors that have taken place. 20 miles to the south, the town of Borodyanka has been hollowed out by Russian missiles and artillery. Below the charred cliff faces of what were once apartment blocks, a police team has the grim task of recovering the remains of the inhabitants. In an ordinary residential street nearby, the detritus of the ill-disciplined army, which apparently forced its way into homes like this, marking the walls with their insignia. The front garden is littered with their ration packs and empty drink bottles. But it is in the back garden that the true depravity of their occupation becomes clear. It seems this man has not only been humiliated, but also horribly tortured. His head is bound in plastic. Візуально ми бачимо, що людина зв'язана, руки зв'язані ззаді, і було якесь катування відносно вище вказаної особи. В зв'язку з тим, що голова замотана, то біж ми навіть візуально не можемо сказати причину смерті. Або це нанесення тілесних ушкоджень, які не сумісні з життям, а людина просто не витримала катування, або він застрелений. The killing and destruction here appears to be wanton, designed to terrorize a population into submission. The bullet through the head of the statue of the Ukrainian hero and poet Taras Shevchenko is a symbol for the contempt with which the Russian soldiers held this country.